All right, this is the best time to talk when he's drinking something. I'm, you don't ever let me talk anyhow. Uh, no, you did a lot of talking last time. All right, hey guys, welcome to the Bob and Joel. <laughs> Whew. Hey, we're sitting in the hangar. It's the right? Aloha Bob That's right. talks to the Wiener Show. Oh, jeez. That is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Should we re-edit this? No, let's just go with it. All right. All right, we, all right so here's, here we go, quiz. Just be quiet for a second, all right? Let me talk. Shut up. Shut up. So... 7,600, we know what that is, right? Everybody should know, right? 7,700, if you've been watching it all, you'll know that two of Jason's good buddies are now part of the 7,700 club. Are you part of the 7,700 club? Been to, I've been to the You're 7,700 club, yeah, right? every now and then. Right, get a, two for one on those? Yeah, I have, yeah. A, I have a, what, what I call That's a right. pucker. I, 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 have, I have not, I'm, now let me ask you a question. If a pilot goes 7,700 on me, does that count? Well, You've been on the other side of the I've not the squawked box. it myself, but no, I have but been you, on the you, receiving end of the 77, right? Flag on Does the that count? Side. So we'll let it count for you this time. No, it's We'll all give right, you a freebie. All right, all right. so go ahead okay. through your scenario. No, no, no. What happens so, in the radar room okay, when, so, when you get this code? Yeah, so, so here's the interesting thing about 7700 squawks, or 7600 squawks for that matter, is um, they, they when you do that, every radar system that can receive something that's within spitting distance of that airplane goes off. Mil every military facility goes off. I mean, that's so a lot. 75, 6, and 7. Yeah, uh, it's the 76 and 77. Right. We won't talk about 75, I'm sure, but I can't tell you the last time I saw that. I'll tell you the last time I saw a 7500 squawk was in a simulator when I was a junior, junior air traffic controller and hijacked thing was. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not that wow. <laughs> no, I'm not that old. No, but. <laughs> man. Uh, no, but we, it was the similar. It was like you would part of the lesson plan was squawk seven six hundred. Then you would go through the procedures on how to uh, deal with that. Make, yeah. Right. And so anyway, the um, it's like and every every hijacker wanted to go to Havana because that you was know, the thing I've in been the seventies. Some I'm of not, the airplane accident, right. the Boeing accident reports way back and, in the day, yeah, right? In the late sixties and seventies, yeah. everybody wanted to go to Cuba. But we'll talk about seventy six hundred seventy six seventy seven to seventy six hundred for right now, and that is that the. Immediately, everybody sees a 7700 squawk. We'll use that one for an example. And other facilities will call and say, hey, do you see that guy or that guy? Well, you cannot miss the alarm that goes off in the radar room when that pops off. Um, so everybody's well aware of what's going on. And then we work through the procedures as far as that's concerned. 7600 squawk, what it does is in, a, in approach controls, most of the time it puts a little red RF above your call sign indicating radio, radio failure and then no real big alarms. And in some cases, I can actually, if you don't even know your radio failure, um, we can put the RF in red above your tag okay. on the radar scope anyways. And I would just tell the next guy, hey, this guy is radio, not talking to him. And then you would go, okay, roger that. And some, at some point, magically, he will come up on the radio, realize he hadn't talked to anybody for an hour. So always when you haven't really heard from a controller, that frequency gets really silent. Probably what good idea. What is the time frame that the controllers get excited? Uh, I think it's 20 minutes from the last time I make an attempt to try to talk to you. Yes, 20 minutes is what I've been told. That's right. I've, I've so, had some issues coming out with weather mm -hmm. and going to Bahamas and not getting the frequency right. change. And if you do the route long enough, you know what the next frequency is. Right. And sometimes when the weather's bad, right. you have some radio issues, especially out over the ocean. There was a guy I knew, this is kind of a golf story, who would try to keep the frequency as quiet as he possibly could. Quiet as he could to see how long he could keep the frequency quiet before somebody would go, hey, are you still there? And so there would Why be a one there, or two in the morning. I've would, actually done that. Well, I'm not talking. Yeah, I mean, evening times. What you know, yeah. like, all right, what's the over under? Uh, let's go ten minutes. Boom. So you get everybody checked in. You not say a word. See how long you go. And somebody would go out there, and then somebody finally would go, "Hey, are you still there?" <laughs> and um, and he would go, "Shh, I'm watching the flight movie." <laughs> And then somebody go, what's the movie? And I go, airplane, of course. <laughs> and that's when it all went to, that's 7,600. So always okay. when the frequency gets, I'm sorry, I've deviated from the, you know. Yeah, just, the course uh, outline, but that, uh, that's right. standard operation. Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we don't have an outline. See all our notes right here? <laughs> all right, so the next thing was, when you put a flight plan out there, let's assume that you're gonna file IFR, and you put something in there and you say, I wanna leave at noon. The computers for the FAA typically spit your flight plan out 30 minutes ahead of time. But okay. say you're 35 minutes from going. Do you think the tower you're at probably won't have your flight plan printed out? It will sit in the machine, 
but right. it has an assign has it not assigned a beacon code yet. or anything like that. And so that has happened many, many times. And so what you'll do is, hey, I'm ready to pick up my clearance, and you go, oh, it's not ready yet. It's more than 30 minutes. Some controllers will say, oh, give me call me call me back in six minutes if it's six minutes early. Others will go ahead and I can actually find the the uh, flight plan, pull it up, and have a no beacon code. So then I would so all right. What beacon code do you want? Now, if I said, what beacon code do you want? It's like, wow, nobody's ever asked me for my own special beacon code. This is kind of cool, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Well, I used to, you know, when, you, when you're when you at Clarence Delivery. Back before the wiener, you didn't have before, a special code. I didn't have a special code. We have, we have a special code now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so I would I would do like your beacon, or I would just assign it. You're, you're clear to X via blah, 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 squawk 2222. Two, two, two. It's pretty safe squawk. I was like, wow, I got four twos. What are the odds I would get four twos? One time I said, what squawk do you want? Well, the guy says, well, I'll take 7777. Well, we oh, never, okay. never have, I've never even, yeah, sounds good to me. Squawk 7777. I go in the machine, bam, 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 7777. It's great. Computer accepts it. We're off and running. Whoosh, he blasts off. Next thing you know, I get a call and I go, hey, um, Bob, um, what, what did you do that for? I go, do what? He goes, uh, you had him squawk 7777. Now, everybody needs to go into the AIM real quick now. So we're going to pause this thing. Okay. Look all right. Up. Just pause it. All right. Just go in and pause. Jump on the AIM. Find out why 777. Now, some of you I know, like Eric Deagle's probably way up to speed on this already. He's probably going, you guys, you know. He's screaming at us right now. I know what it is. But here's a pause. Ready? Pause. Don't move. All right. So there's the pause. And it's military intercept. So what happens is, is it puts MI above your call sign. So you, you launched a few F-15s that day? No, fortunately he did get intercepted, but because nobody saw it coming, but everybody goes, what's this? Because we don't get military intercepts and right. domestically. In, in, yeah, All of a sudden, side. MI, everybody goes, what's this MI thing? And we, had to, we didn't know. You had to look it up. And then Things like, you learn some days. Seven, 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 seven. Bad Good idea. Good controller is always learning. Oh yeah, we're always learning. That's hundred percent. No, that's actually yeah. true. You learn some things. Even guys who've been in around for a while. It was like, for example, special VFRs. Okay. You love special VFRs, don't you? Jason you and I did one this morning. You did? Yeah. Really? Eight hundred scattered here. They wouldn't let us out. Really? So let's take a special. And what do you need to be a special VFR? A mile clear class. That's right. So anyway, uh, special VFRs were one. Uh, would you get, did you get a squawk? Not in a J3. It's a little hard to get a squawk. No, there's no squawk. System. There's no squawk. And <laughs> special VFRs don't need a squawk. Some will give them to you, but generally you don't need a squawk to come in. Or no, I just had to report clear. That's right. So what is your other favorite approach? Or your, oh, um, I like contact approaches. You love contact I approaches. I come into this airport here. If you, if, depends where you fly in, in different airports, but I've used contact approaches at Craig and at Destin, Florida, because if you can fly over the airport and see it, I can stay within a mile range of the airport and get on the ground. Is that the requirement, stay within a mile? Well, you need to, you need to clear a cloud. You need to have okay. contact with the ground. Well, I'm just saying, you say I got to stay you within have, a mile. Well, you have airport. to be clear clouds and be able to contact Gee, with the okay. ground. Okay, all right, I'm cool with that, all right, so, right. So what is, did you get any pushback from your controller when you asked for a contact um, approach? Every now and then they'll say, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And I was going to Vero Beach and right. I, I could see the runway. Yeah. And they, said they didn't have the visibility or and I can see it now the storm was on the other side of the field and I said I'll take a contact approach well he wouldn't give it to me he would not allow me to take contact approach and so they wanted to vector me over toward the storm for the approach yep. which then I said I couldn't do that um, and they weren't VFR and they wouldn't let me cancel so I that finally they said the tower went VFR you can proceed in VFR. so can I give you a kind of behind the scenes yeah, on let me know. contact approaches the first time you issued, said, hey, I got to ask for a contact approach, and I got a whole lot of, you know, Nordo on the other side, you know, right. radio failure, because they did, it was such a foreign thing. In fact, before you and I started hanging out together, the number of times that I had ever cleared a contact approach, maybe once or twice in my entire career, right. it's just not a thing that people do. First of all, I don't believe that the airlines will ever do a contact Anything, approach. It, well, it's stated in when I flew yeah. 135, we were not allowed to do contact approach. That's right. You, so you can it just, it's not in. The, so it's for somebody that knows the airplane, knows the area. Right. And, That's right. You know, and, and so a guy, so the airlines, the charters, nobody's shooting. No. So, that, so it's not applicable. And then, of course, most of the IFR guys don't really think of, I mean, the conditions for which contact approaches are actually applicable, you know, not very often. Most no. of them, you're just going to shoot the approach. 
And that's why you just never get them. However, I sat down, you, know, you started doing them and we had a little discussion and here's the kind of the gig on this. When control radar rooms and towers get together and they talk about how they're gonna feed airplanes to each other and how that coordination works, very, very rarely, if any at all, will there be any contingency for a contact approach. So for example, let's say, we'll use Orlando International for example. Okay. The, the tag will have your call sign and then it will have a three digit character and every approach calls to typically do this, not all of them, but some sort of most of them do, will indicate what approach he's shooting and to what runway. This is pretty okay. straight. Visual to 1-8 left, visual or ILS, you mean, or whatever's advertised on the ATIS. If it's right. advertised on ILS, and so you get the idea. Contact approaches, because they're so rare, we just don't have a contingency for those. Right. So they have to, it's like, it's like, I want a contact approach and I want it now. That will mean that the controller then has to get off and go on to the call the tower and say, this guy wants to shoot a contact approach from right here. Right. And so it'll be coming in from a different angle. From well, that's, approach, that's right? an issue. Or because you want to do it right away, the, the coordination between the two goes, he wants to do it. That's the deal. And so we there's. We tried to do one of those in Ocala one time, right, but we, she wouldn't give it to us. No, it's because there was other things going on. So, for example, let's assume for the sake of argument that there's a sequence going into the airport, ILS after ILS right, after and ILS. Airplanes lined up. And you're on the downwind, and the field is listed as IFR, and you've got the field inside. So I, I can't cancel because the field's IFR. But I can't. I can shoot a contact approach. There's a sequence that has to be made. Okay. So it just it doesn't mean you just bump right on in and go because there's still separation it's that not I like have. Like LA to, traffic, we just squeeze right in. Doesn't there. work that way. Uh -huh. No, that's what. So there's that issue. So there's a coordination between the radar room and the tower, and then there's a sequence possibilities as all that really make contact approaches really challenging. If there's nothing going on, you still have to get on there probably manually. That's I was off the land. I was off the frequency yeah. for a moment. I was on the landline. Say again, kind of thing. All, that's, that is a perfect example of how and how difficult contact approaches are because as a pilot, we wanted to do it right then and there and we wanted to dive in and right, go. We to, yeah. And it doesn't work because there's a coordination because we're IFR. So that's the contact approach stuff. It has nothing to do with squawks, but your favorite contact approach. All right, I got a question on, the, on a, an approach sequence. Mm -hmm. So we're getting vectored in on an approach sequence and we're at 2,000 feet mm -hmm. and they give a heading and an altitude. So you go through your clearance of Hitting altitude mm -hmm. um, and clear yep. the approach. So, yep. Um, what is the required readback from the pilot on one of those approaches? Right. So it's an interesting thing. I think when you your CFI will sit down and discuss, we want to read back all the things you should be reading back: the heading, the altitude, to maintain, to establish, and then clear for the approach. Okay. Now I have heard a lot of different variations on a the theme over the years. We have. But right. interestingly enough, from a controller perspective, we, I am more concerned about saying it correctly than I am hearing it back in the sense I'm still looking for those items for sure. Right. But, you know, for example, when I say maintain 6,000, it's, it's natural for me. I know exactly what my plan is. I know what this, but approach clearances take forever. So, for example, when we were doing instrument training and here comes the, the localizer becomes alive and you're going, I'm waiting for the approach clearance, I'm waiting for the approach right. clearance. I'm sitting there in my mind as a controller going, I need 30 degrees off a of center line if I'm this far away from the fix. If I'm this far away, it's only 20 degrees. Right. So I'm sitting there and I always tell new people, you gotta know your intercept heading. So for right. example, if it's 1-8, I gotta know I'm gotta do inside a 2-1-0. Turn left and, and default out that number as a number that you're satisfying requirement, satisfying the altitude right. so that you can clear for the approach. So the control so the intercept's always 20 to 30 degrees. Depends on how far you away well, from the- And also the wind. I mean, the know, wind is a- That's another a one too, because they don't really count into a wind. So as you're driving in there, that's another thing, is when you're coming in and you got a really big wind, yeah. and he's just taking forever to get there, and then you give him that 30 degrees, or if he has a tailwind and he goes it, through, it, you're it, trying to lead him in. Right. You'll see a technique a lot where um, to kind of help that out and use the automation to your advantage, you'll say, fly to a fix, join a localizer. And right. I can take the wind right or out of it. Or the T-fixes on the... Uh, or the, the RNAVs, so the same RNAVs. kind of things. Right, you'll get those. And that really helps controllers because it eliminates the wind. So as a pilot, you might say, can we go direct this waypoint? And that way, you know, you can track it in. Another thing is, uh, you know, hey, fly this heading, track the localizer doesn't mean, or track the final doesn't mean you're clear for the approach. Kind of keep that in mind. Always listen for yeah, that yeah. from perspective. Because there may right. be something in front of you. Oh yeah, right. So there's many times where I'll say, I just want them to join, but I don't want them to start the profile down because that can cause, I'm waiting for something else to occur. But um, the readbacks are just like anything so, else. So we need altitude, yeah. heading, 
and, and clear the approach. approach. Right. And yeah. then if it's a circling approach, you need to read I'll that get, as yeah, well. circle as well. Right. Okay. You want to read back those things. Those are important. And um, but I was, it's interesting from the control perspective, we're really trying to make sure we say it correctly just because it's it's a weird thing because you're sitting and you'll get where you're saying it so fast that you're just trying to tick off the um, the, the requirements right. for the approach clearance um, because you have a lot of other things going on and it takes so long to say that. Uh, one of the tick tricks I'll, I'll teach is uh, just get a heading to join. You might be okay. at an altitude you're at, say 2,000 feet or 3,000 okay. feet or what have you, and I'm happy with that altitude. And so, because I don't have time to issue the entire approach clearance, I go, turn left, I need 220, join the final. Right. And then that way it buys me some time that I can come back and go, you're three yeah, miles from there, yeah, clear for the approach, and off you go. Because once you're established. As a controller, how far outside the final approach right. do you have to have intercepted right. and clear for So the that's approach. a good point. So if you're doing practice approaches, controllers can actually put you on the final approach fix. Okay. As a, for if you're practice approaching and that, but on a regular ILS approach, there's a final approach fix, and then you've heard the magic approach gate. This is, here we go. Right. Ready for the math, everybody? This is going to be a bug. All right, All right. here right. we go. This is final approach fix, approach gate, which is two miles out. It's like two miles outside. Okay. Yeah, right. So the approach gate is one mile outside of final approach fix. We've got to get you established two miles outside of final approach fix. Okay. So it's three when miles. Did, when did that become official? My whole career. Okay. I have not heard anything because different. I remember us right. flying checks right. in the 210s. Right. We would do what they call a slam dunk approach. We'd come in and oh, yeah. 45 degree turn at the final approach. Well, and that's, dump it in. that's a whole different animal it's together. Right. In the morning and well, I'm not talking about that, but you asked me. If, don't, you don't, didn't don't. ask me about that. Oh, okay. I'm just telling so, you. All right, so. you, you gotta be, will you be quiet for a all second? Right, let me listen. Listen. It's listen. Listen, listen. It's final approach fix and then three miles outside the final. Well, I can go through all the nuances, but it's three miles. I want you established three miles prior to the final approach fix. That's okay. what we're trying to accomplish. In other words. If for whatever reason you get a vector and it's joining inside of that, the controller should come back and say, hey, you know, are you good right. with pressing So two to three miles outside right. the final approach fix. And that, Not, I just say two to three, I said three. Three, okay, so three miles. Right, three. right. This is the first time we get to correct you, right. Yeah, but that's three miles. So it's about the same it. place when you're doing multi-engine training. That's where yeah. they would pull the engine, right. and you'd have to. Well, think of, it makes sense better. because you want to uh, get enough time to where you're setting up the airplane. So here comes the final approach fix, and down the hill you yeah. go. So that's kind of the gig there. If, if for example, you miss the turn or you're late for the turn, and now you're correcting back, and here comes the final, and there's a final approach fix. You know, it's okay. like, do you want to continue or do you want me to box you back around? Is another one. So right. kind of keep that in mind. I've got one other one. We're inside yeah. the final approach fix and we're shooting the localizer. Mm -hmm. So we're underneath the glide slope. Right. And then the tower keys up and you can hear the rig horn in the back yep. and he's giving you a, a low altitude alert. Yep. So go through what a low altitude alert is. So the parameters are such on those is, and there was a, a discussion, I think, um, of the terms, non-official, of course, of dive and drive on non-precision approaches yeah, I, and I such. Think 20 and years ago that was. That's right. Somebody, I'd heard that term before. Somewhere came up right, but that. we talked about stable approaches and stable configurations right. all the way down. There are some guys who descend a lot faster. And so the computer is looking at terrain and where they are mode C wise to see where they are. Right. And if it starts to get out of whack, then the alarm will go off called low altitude alert. Okay. And then by right, we, we have no choice in the matter. We have to reach out and say, hey, low altitude right. alert, check your altitude, off we go. On okay. visual approaches, we could, the controllers can look out and say, okay, he's, we're he's okay. Fine. But on instrument approaches, because things have happened over the years, there's a backstop. They want to make sure that those yeah, things are the covered. The last one yeah. I had, we, we were doing a, a localizer yep. approach, and uh, we dropped down to 500 feet, about four miles from yeah. the airport, yeah. and they gave us an alert. Yeah. Of course, we're buzzing in neighborhoods at you know, 500 you, feet. Uh, 508 feet? Yeah. yeah. Only the localizer minimums. Well, I understand. Yeah. Circling minimums. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So. It's all good. So. Hope those are fun. Um, if you learned something about um, squawks and what else do we know, contact approaches and kind of what goes on behind yeah, the scenes we'll, on an approach clients. Both sides between yeah. the pilot and so. the controller. Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to us banter back and forth. I think I won this argument today. Shut up. Uh, I remember. <laughs> hey, enjoy it. Keep flying, all right? Keep flying. And have fun. And doing remember, it. good pilots pilot always learn. Learn it. See you guys. <laughs> I am dying. I am lowly smoking over here. I didn't want to sit there and start wiping sweat off, but... <laughs>